State of Mankind. How much do you know? Excerpts from How the Specter of Communism is Ruling Our World. 111. A principal scientist at the IPCC once said, If we want a good environmental policy in the future, we'll have to have a disaster. It's like safety on public transport. The only way humans will act is if there's been an accident. Though he later explained that he wasn't advocating the fabrication of data, his message was clear, disaster is the main driver of action and policy making. Linking global warming to instances of extreme weather has become a popular method to exaggerate the severity of climate problems. Scientific hypotheses that agree with the popular trend have also been appearing continuously. In early 2014, North America experienced an extremely cold winter. One theory about the causes of the harsh winter is that global warming resulted in melting in the North Pole, which in turn altered the route of the jet stream. As a result, the extreme cold air mass from the North Pole was moved south, creating more frequent cold weather toward the south. Such a counterintuitive hypothesis was supported by the media and environmentalists, even extreme coldness is caused by global warming, they claimed. In fact, meteorological records over the long term show that the occurrences of extreme cold weather in North America have been decreasing rather than the other way around. In 2014, five prominent meteorologists published a joint letter in Science magazine to illustrate this fact. They stated that in the early 1960s, late 1970s, especially 1977, and 1983, when the ice layer in the North Pole was much thicker and wider than it is now, there was much more severe cold weather than in 2014. Within the last 50 to 100 years, what is certain is that occurrences of extremely cold weather have decreased. John Wallace, a professor of atmospheric science, said, establishing a linkage between extreme weather events and climate change is not as easy as it might seem. The power of statistical inference is limited by sample size, even when the linkage is statistically significant, as in the case of heat waves, the more extreme the event, the smaller the relative contribution of global warming to the observed anomaly, the limitations imposed by sample size would not be such a serious issue if the mechanisms that link extreme weather events to climate change were well understood, but unfortunately, they are not. In November 2017, Steve Koonin, the former U.S. Department of Energy's second Senate confirmed Under Secretary for Science, published an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal titled The Deceptive New Report on Climate. He criticized the U.S. government's climate science special report for reinforcing the disaster mentality with its misrepresentation of rising sea levels. The climate science special report stated that since 1993, the sea level has been rising at a rate twice what was recorded throughout the rest of the 20th century. But the report ignored the fact that the recent speed of rising was comparable to that of the early 20th century, when human activity had little impact on the environment. This is misleading by omission. The executive summary of the report said that since the middle of the 1960s, heat waves in the United States had become more frequent. However, data buried in the report showed that the frequency of the current heat waves was no more than that in the 1900s. Similar scare tactics also appeared in the U.S. government's 2014 National Climate Assessment Report, which emphasized the increased intensity of hurricanes after 1980, but ignored records kept over longer periods of time. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, recently stated that it could not find evidence for any impact on the severity of hurricanes resulting from human activity. In fact, the heat waves occurred most frequently in the 1930s, not in the 21st century. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's heat wave index shows that four years in the 1930s had an annual heat wave index of 0.45 while the hottest year in the 21st century so far has an index of around 0.3. Greenhouse gas emissions in the 1930s were only 10% that of the 21st century. Professor Mike Hume, director of the United Kingdom's Dindal Center for Climate Change Research, said, Over the last few years a new environmental phenomenon has been constructed in this country, the phenomenon of catastrophic climate change. It seems that mere climate change was not going to be bad enough and so now it must be catastrophic to be worthy of attention, why is it not just campaigners, but politicians and scientists too, who are openly confusing the language of fear, terror and disaster with the observable physical reality of climate change, actively ignoring the careful hedging which surrounds science's predictions. The late Stephen H. Schneider was an advocate of climate theory consensus and the coordinating lead author in Working Group 2 of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC 
third assessment report. In addressing Hume's concerns, he admitted, we need to get some broad-based support to capture the public's imagination. That, of course, entails getting loads of media coverage. So we have to offer up scary scenarios, make simplified, dramatic statements, and make little mention of any doubts we might have. He believed that scientists must choose between being effective and being honest, though he added that he wished to have both. The climate crisis has received much hype. Behind it are sinister forces that intend not only to pave the way for a global government, but also to destroy research ethics in the scientific community. Climatology is a young subject with only a few decades of history. Yet the hypotheses surrounding global warming have been prematurely taken as fact. The media has been keeping global warming in the headlines to cover up the inaccuracies in the underlying science. Governments pour funds into researching the global warming hypothesis while marginalizing other findings. In the process of establishing and reinforcing the consensus and strengthening it, communism's nature of struggle and hatred are exposed. While scientists are building consensus, the media and politicians label the consensus of catastrophic climate change as scientifically proven and spread it worldwide as unassailable doctrine. Thinking on the matter has been largely unified and has planted convoluted notions of good and bad in people's minds. The aforementioned dismissal of eco-terrorism crimes committed by Greenpeace in Britain was based exactly on the supposed consensus that greenhouse gases are causing a climate catastrophe. The multitude of regulations and policies based on this doctrine stand to throw the world into chaos. Destroying the old world by any means is a basic strategy of communism. These measures are all to pave the road to a false solution, a global government, to a fabricated crisis for the ostensible purpose of saving the earth and mankind. From Chapter 16, The Communism Behind Environmentalism